in the last two videos, we've been working through the derivations of Doppler shift and the velocity addition formula in special relativity. And uh, one of the things that we'll, we'll need for this uh, to continue on is when we had observers A and observer B moving with respect to A, if, and they started out at the same point, if person A sends a light signal from A to B, starting at a time t a, then we said we made the argument that this distance has to correspond to some value k times t a, and that k we calculated had to be this square root of 1 plus v over c over 1 minus v over c, uh, where v is the relative velocity between these two observers. And this is all acting in a straight line, so if the derivation is different if you have motion that's kind of going sideways or, or anything like that but and also since there's no special frame b says that they're the ones that are at rest and a is moving with velocity v with respect to b so if you fire a beam from b back to a the kind of opposite equation is also true if it's sent at time tb according to b's clock then it'll arrive at a at time KTB uh, according to A's clock. So for the next little part, we're going to uh, we're going to cheat a little bit by saying that uh, just saying C is equal to one meter per second. Now some now people are going to say, well, it's definitely not that, so it's not true. But all this is going to do is make us not have to worry about all the values of c that are going to be flying around in these equations it's going to make them make them a lot simpler and then at the end we just have to make sure that all of our units match up so if i have some x plus t or something like that these have different units so that's not going to work i'm just going to throw a c in there and then the units work out and then the equations valid if i have any v's i'm going to take that and i'm going to just divide those by c so these are dimensionless now so I'm going to take out all the C's for now, so that may be missing, but, but uh, I'll add them back in at the end. So let's say I have observer A, and uh, A is going to send a light signal to some point, and it's going to be reflected back. Say there's a, say there's a mirror over there. So this is uh, TA, and this is TB. So if this point is at a position, let's say this is at a position xA. So its position coordinate is xA, and its time coordinate, according to A, we're going to call uh, uh, capital TA. Or let's just leave it as, as lowercase. Let's say we're looking at a single point. Well then, if the speed of light is one meter per second, then this point is going to have to be at a time t a minus x a. There should be some factors of c in there, but again, we're not going to worry about them right now. It happened before this, and it needed that amount of time, a certain amount of time, to make it to x a. Uh, and in order to make it that distance, going at the speed of light, which we're saying is one meter per second, it needed whatever that distance is, that's the amount of time in seconds it needs. And this p point is going to be at a time t a plus x a okay so we have we can write this coordinate and look at the light beam that bounces to that coordinate and then back from that coordinate and then and then label these points well let's take a look at what uh what how observer b does that so we have and i'm going to make this uh this graph a fair bit bigger. I'm going to make it over here. So we have uh, we have the xa chord axis, we have the ta axis, and now we have an observer b that's moving with respect to a as usual. So let's say I'm going to do the same thing with b, but I'm going to bounce it off a point over here. Uh, let me let me do that a little bit closer in. Let's say that points right here. Well, that light would have come from 
over here, and then bouncing back, it would arrive over here. And we remember that the spatial axis of this is tilted, so this is saying it's at the same moment in time, according to B. So I have, I have some of the angles off, but this, ang this length should be the same as this length. Uh, I apologize that my uh, drawing is definitely not off, not quite on. So if this is position XB, the position as measured by observer B, and this is position TB, then this position has to be TB plus XB, the time that the light is returned, and the time that it was sent is going to have to be TB minus XB. Well, we can take those positions and let's say I extend it, extend both of these light beams back to where they may have originated at A. So now we have this position is going to be, uh, again, we say, you know, I could say that this occurs at time TA and is at position XA. So this is the position that A uh, says it's at. So this time here would be TA plus XA. This time here would be TA minus XA. Okay, so, so we've gone through a lot of that. Why, why did we do this? Well, now we can use these relationships to relate both these times and these positions. So let's say I look at this point right here. This TB minus XB, so TB minus XB, that time that it says it is, must equal, uh, if we take this picture, we see that it uh, overlays this picture very well. So it's going to have to be equal to k times whatever the time coordinate is on the on a's time axis. So it's going to be equal to k times t a minus x a. Okay, and likewise we can do the same thing relating these two side lengths. If this is t a plus x a, then. Uh, TA plus XA is going to equal K times the time coordinate according to B at this point. So this is going to be K times TB plus XB. And I want to just bring all of these Ks over, over to this side, so I'm going to divide both sides by K. Okay, so now We've taken this figure and we've related the time uh, components and the spatial, the time coordinates and the spatial coordinates according to B to the time coordinates and spatial coordinates according to A. So we can solve for TB and, uh, and XB in terms of the values in A. And one thing that's going to be helpful uh, is this formula here. Uh, if I take one half k plus 1 over k, then that's going to give me 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. It takes a couple of lines to prove this, uh, but I just recommend uh, trying this out. And we're going to call this quantity gamma. So in the same way that this weird mess of, you know, v's and c's and, you know, square roots and everything, we called that k, we're going to take this one over square root of one minus v squared over c squared, we're gonna use the Greek letter gamma for that. And also if I take one half k minus one over k, that's going to be equal to gamma times v over c. And I encourage you to, uh, to take this, this equation for k and test this out. It's, it's a little bit of messy algebra, but it's, it's definitely doable at a, at a high school level. 
So taking these equations, we can solve for TB and XB, and the equations that we get, and, and let's have a, uh, a new color for this, we'll get TB equals gamma times TA minus V over C XA. And if I put all the, t all the appropriate C's back in, then once I'm ready to put those C's back in, this is where they go. And XB is going to equal gamma times minus V over C times CTA. You could cancel those out, but this is just to make sure this is dimensionless and this has dimensions of meters and gamma is always dimensionless as well. Uh, that quantity plus XA. And actually, if I, if I change to the coordinates for, for A, I would get, if I want to do the same thing but solve for the values in A, I would get uh, CTA equals gamma CTA plus V over C X. Sorry, uh, I made a mistake here. This should be B plus V over C X B. I think I'm still on the window there. And here we get x a equals gamma v over c c t b plus x b. And the one thing that we notice between these, these are converting from the coordinates of a to the coordinates of b or converting from the coordinates of b back to the coordinates of a. And you notice that comparing these uh, each of these two equations, the only difference is that the velocity is changed to a minus. So we're here where we have negative velocity, here we go to plus velocity. Uh, here where we have negative velocity, we go to plus velocity. And that makes sense since if I see uh, uh, observer B moving away from me, so, so in, if I see observer B moving in the positive, we'll call this the positive x direction away from me, then B is going to see me, uh, let me just draw this out, then B, so this is, this is B's axis, is going to see A moving in the negative direction. Same, same value for the velocity, same magnitude of the velocity, but the direction is gonna be negative. And this set of equations is what we call a Lorentz transformation. And it's the kind of transformation that allows the speed of light to appear constant in whichever frame you are. I can, uh, I can do these coordinate transformations and the speed of light will still be C. And I'm, I'm over time again, so I'll do the very last bit on the length contraction and time dilation in, in the next video.